Dead and buried with Christ, Colossians 2, 11 and 12. Hey, this is vlog number 15 about Jesus' birth through his death on the cross. Let's get started. In the Heidelberg Catechism, in question and answer number 37, it talks about Jesus sacrificing himself on the cross. That's the atonement. Here's the assignment for the atonement. It says that he set us free, body and soul, from eternal condemnation. And what did he gain for us? Well, God's grace, and secondly, righteousness, and lastly, eternal life. These three things are wonderful blessings for us in Christ that we can enjoy now before we die. Our debt of sin that we owe God, what was it? It was sin. And Jesus took it to the cross, and it has been canceled now. And that is a huge blessing to us. Oh, we have so many more blessings more and more but we're going to learn about a few today now in verses colossians 2 11 and 12 and also from question and answer number 43 and in that it's asked the question says the answer about slavery to sin it says that now we have been set free from this slavery to sin Number 43 says that the evil desires of our flesh rule us no more. Now Paul, this is a sign for Paul, he teaches in the Bible, he emphasizes this truth. He says we are free from the slavery and he explains that we are united, united with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. From the verses Colossians 2, 11 and 12, we're going to learn that we have been buried with Jesus in his baptism. Paul's not talking about water baptism, no. Water baptism would not wash us clean. No, he's talking about a spiritual baptism. Jesus finished the work on the cross. We have trust in Jesus alone and we are separated from our sins. We are no longer slaves. Now, the spiritual baptism and we can see a picture of it in water baptism. And that means the group who are believers first. They believe in Christ and they are bab they're baptized. And the moment they believe in Christ, they have spiritual baptism. All of our sins have already been imputed to Christ on the cross. We are no longer slaves to sin. Everything has been canceled. All of it went to the cross with Christ. Now we are in union, in union with Christ. Now, how do we identify with him? Well, when God looks at us, he sees Christ. Dead, buried, all of it. The sin is all gone and paid for as if we did it, but Christ did it for us on the cross in our place. Before, sin had power over us. But we came to trust Jesus and sin lost its power over us. No control, no more control. We became like Christ. Now, a group of believers, they can resist, refuse sin. We can. The goal should be to live a holy life. We want to honor God. But a group of non-believers, they can't resist or refuse sin. They can't do it. It's just always there. They're slaves to sin. It's their nature, their sinful nature they got from Adam. Really, all people, all people in the world have a sinful nature that was handed down from Adam. But the believers have a new nature. Crucified, dead, and buried with Christ. The believers, what is it? It is a holy nature. That's what they have, a new man in Christ. So what do we do now? Well, we serve God. We are free from the bondage of sin to serve Christ, to serve our God. Now, how does this apply to our life? Well, our old sinful nature in Adam has been buried. 
that's true but it keeps it keeps trying to pop up to rear its ugly head time and time again but we have this new nature in christ also but it sin keeps trying to pop up and what do we do when it does well we need to resist it and try to keep it buried we need to do this and and, and how does this mean that we do it well we need to continue to resist sin continue to do that and secondly if we do sin what do we do we repent if we sin again we repent again and again and again and again we just keep doing it that is the Christian life we know that we're not going to be perfect now sin it's always going to have the influence here on this on this world until we get to heaven right now it, it doesn't have control over us no but there is still danger there danger of it popping up and we can we do have the ability to resist it we can people that are not believers they can't resist it they can't but we must we must continue to try you know it's hard for the Christians to believe that we are really free from the slavery of sin right but we are yes now the temptation what does that mean does that mean you're sinning because you're tempted no it does not temptation is not sin that's normal that happens to people in their lives but now when we say we choose to sin that's different that is sin we have not buried it believers have a changed heart they are a new man they are new in the Lord and they are really free from sin it has no control over them let me give you an example like if you take a ball and you inflate it up and fill it full of air and it does what it's supposed to it bounces up and down right well say this ball that it gets deflated well it doesn't have enough air in it so when you take the ball and you try to bounce it up and down what's gonna happen can it bounce up and down no it's just gonna plop it's gonna hit the ground just stay on the ground and that's like us as Christians we have this new nature this new man in us this new nature is inside of us and we are all filled up with it and we are raising up towards God and, we're, and we are free from sin free from sins control we are no longer slaves to sin but sometimes like the ball it's going to get deflated and going to go down and then it'll go back up and down back up and down up and down and that's that's how it is with us too can it stay up how can we stay up we're in Christ we have this new nature people who are not in Christ the non-believers can can they go up like the ball can no they can't even do that no because they are slaves to sin they would stay on the ground like the deflated ball sin has control over us 100 percent no it has zero percent we are free from the control of sin a question do you think sin has control over you 100 percent no believe it it's zero percent no control we have a new nature in Christ we have become like Christ quorum Dio <laughs>